Hey, what's up? It's Jake, and we're going to finish off Terraform testing with uh, trying a little Terra test. So up until this point, you've heard me say that I'm not a huge fan, but it is pretty cool, and we'll go ahead and show you how this works. So in my production grade Terraform repo, which is where I have dev, stage, prod, etc., I made a demo Terra test directory. In said directory, I just created a main.tf file uh, to do a hello world example and I thought you know what it'd probably be cooler if I tested this against my actual like low balancer creation so I did and uh, it's working it's pretty cool so let me show you how this works let me delete this guy so um, this is a go file and I copy and pasted this from the internet and kind of just modified it for my own needs so the goal was I want to launch my load balancer um, and, and, you know, put my auto scaling group in a target group and then be able to hit my load balancer and go, does this actually work? And I just have like an index.html page that says hello world. And so I want to do a Terraform in it, a Terraform apply, test that load balancer and then destroy everything. But I don't want to have to do four separate steps. I want to do it all in one step. So this would be great if you were doing like a, a continuous integration and you wanted to do some kind of event trigger that ran this test to prove this code for delivery um, or send a message back to the developers, say, hey, you need to get good, something like that. Um, so you just uh, follow their, their pattern and the pattern really, let me see if I can pull this up, uh, here is the quick start guide and this pattern is just kind of setting up um, uh, an initialization of go which will create your your go mod file and then any modules or dependencies that you need to install you can do using the go get command so every time I ran this and it failed as you go get something and usually if it doesn't work you need to do like at latest or something like that but there's versions for everything um, so very much like terraform requiring certain providers and having those modules downloaded go will just get the module it needs in order for it to be able to use certain functions in this case um, i'm importing format testing time and an http helper from this git repo and the Terra test modules for Terraform. So I went ahead and went go get all these things, made sure they were all installed, and then um, here's my function. So I'm going to do uh, test Terraform AWS Hello World example. So again, I totally changed this, so that's not really what it, it I mean, it does because I made a server that says Hello World, but anyways, this could be called whatever you want. It just has to be. Make sure it's a function that's actually used and called. So, um, what I did was I ran this in parallel, so you can have multiple time, multiple runs, and then you're going to construct, like it says, the Terraform option with default retriable errors. So, okay, my options are going to be with default retriable errors, and I'm going to tell it which directory to go to. So, in this case, I'm going to test out my load balancer, which lives here. So, I pass the Terraform directory. At the end of this test, it you can have it run Terraform Destroy. So if you're running this in Jenkins, for example, you can have it uh, a special environment for Jenkins where it can run tests and build and destroy infrastructure. Um, Terraform init and apply, I can tell it to do that. And this can be copy and pasted in whatever order that makes sense. Obviously, this is deferring this destroy until it's done, right? So um, I have it in and apply and destroy, but I need to do a test. So I grab this output. I have an ALB DNS output in my main file, if you go to the bottom. And so I want to grab this and use that as my endpoint. So I set a variable uh, to Terraform output to grab ALB DNS. And then I set a URL to, for the test that says go HTTP colon slash slash and then percent %s port 80 where percent %s is public IP which is the value of my output from my main.tf file in my root module. So then I'm going to make an HTTP request using this HTTP helper and 
make sure I get back a 200 OK with the body of Hello World, which is exactly what my web server does. I uh, modify the index.html file to make sure it says Hello World, but this text really could be anything. It, it, this test really, sorry, could be anything, not text. So how does this work? Well, as you can see here, because um, it takes a little bit, but I'll pause the video while I'm waiting. Um, it goes through, I'll just show you really quick. It goes through your um, init and the apply. It approves the apply. This apply is very long. And then it tries to do the test. If the test is successful, then it go ahead and will destroy everything. So let's see what that looks like. So in order to run this, you just go go test. And I do dash V for verbose, but I can go ahead and take this off or else it's going to be really noisy. And then just point it to your go file. So you can write multiple tests and have multiple files um, set up for each test for each module for unit testing. Or in this case, I have a load balancer in an auto scaling group module, so I could do them together and that would be an integration test. Or I could use all my modules with my VPC and that would be an end to end test. So in this case, I'm just going to do a unit test. All right, so hit go and watch and see what it does. So the first thing it should be doing is a Terraform init and then a Terraform reply and then the test and Terraform destroy. So I'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll bring back when it's done. Okay, and it's done. So it took 214 seconds to complete and the test result was okay. So you can use that test result for any number of events, whether you're doing Slack webhooks or you know some kind of notification um, to do something else after the test is complete. So the non-verbose version of this just shows, hey, I ran this test. Here's the result, and this is how long it took. So the verbose version gives you every single event. So when you're testing this, you might want to try it and see. But um, as you can see here, I do not have any resources. So in 214 seconds, this did a Terraform in it, a Terraform reply, built all my resources, did my test to check for my uh, HTTP helper to look for a 200 status code and check that the body of my page was hello world and then came back and said, okay, that's successful and then did a Terraform destroy and took everything down and all of that took 214 seconds. And I only had to run one command, which can also be automated with continuous integration. So that is the power and the, uh, advantage to using TerraTest. So it's pretty cool, right? Um, I don't know if this will fit your particular use case for testing. Um, like I said, there's there's not a lot to test. <laughs> um, if you're not using web servers and you have to get creative with what exactly it is you're testing, what region are you in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you're doing it to verify things, it's probably best to put that in something like a Sentinel policy to ensure that it's in the right region and things like that. Um, so there might be some filters that can be done with Sentinel policies, but then verification that's done with terror test. So up to you how you want to use this, but that's how it works. And this is a simple example of how to use it. So uh, again, I use the terror test gruntwork.io docs for the uh, getting started just to kind of figure out how to do this. And then I took the example, um, not this Terraform example, but this test uh, is what I used from the example number two uh, and where I got that code. And all I did was change the directory. That's really the only thing I changed. And then just made sure I did go get all these items to import them so that I had a correct go sum and a go mod uh, file that we're here and all of that can be done in separate repos or separate directories or whatever you however you want to do it um, you can put these tests inside of your uh, modules if you want to um, but I, I really think it's best to use these in a test account where you have uh, continuous integration running to have automated tests so Anyways, I hope that helps, and this is the last section on Terraform testing, and I hope you learned something.
and I will see you in the next one.